May the gentle soul of our brother, the Honorable Justice C.C. Wilson, continue to rest in peace. Thank you very much. Not the years in your life that count. It is the life in your years. So said one of the greatest American president, Abraham Lincoln. Our assemblage here today is to honor one of our colleagues, the late Honorable Justice Chima Santos Nwese, JSC CFR, who passed away on Saturday, the 29th of July, 2023. At the age of 64 years, this occasion once again brings to mind one thing, the certainty of death after life. As we all know, nothing lasts forever, and there is nothing with a beginning without an end. As human beings, we all have our individual entry date and exit date from this world. Like William Shakespeare put it, life is a stage and each one has his or her role to play, after which he quits the stage permanently. There is no reaza and there is no practice on how and when to die. We die once, and that hence the sojourn here on earth. No one can spend a moment longer than the time permitted by the Almighty God. That is the more reason why we should always be very mindful of the fact that there is a tide in the affairs of men. The works of our hands shall testify on our behalf when we are gone. That succinctly explains the above quote from Abraham Lincoln. Just as every birth brings joy and excitement, so every death brings in its trade, anguish, and sorrow, irrespective of the age of the deceased. It is therefore with a heart full of pain and grief that I join you all in mourning our departed brother, Justice Shima Sanchez Nwese, who had best striding the Nigerian judicial landscape with a remarkable academic discernment. He was one of those cerebrally mobile judicial officers in our contemporary history who had last on our memory an enviable degree of intellectual eminence and legal finance that encompassed all spheres of philosophy and methodical reasoning. My Lord, the Honorable Justin Funwezi was a very unique and nationalistic personality with a radical posture of justice and rule of law. Even though he looked simple and unassuming, his logic was very strict and consciously principled in disposition. He was always very warm and engaging, which underscores the litany of friends and admirers that were always milling round him. Like all great men, my lord was a man of paradox, simple without being simplistic in disposition, elitist and dignified in courage. Yet, he related exceptionally well with everyone around him, especially the underprivileged and the downtrodden in the society. His entire life was completely devoid of duplicity, undue arrogance, and elitism. As some people often manifest once fortune smiles on them and they are elevated to position of influence and affluence. The simple honest and humble lifestyle of his lordship were manifestly a reflection of his environment, his upbringing, 
and of course his philosophy of life, which had invariably elevated him to the enviable status he attained before the cold hands of death surreptitiously so snatched him from us in a shocking and disheartening manner. His lordship was one man who strongly believed that honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. The Honorable Justice C.C. Nwese, that I knew very well, and our remarkable acquaintance with, was a dogged fighter for whatever cause he believed in. Yet, an astute advocate of the arts of medication and reconciliation. Those who knew his lordship very well will harbor no doubt of his expansive landscape of courage that does not hurt or intimidate others. He epitomized the generosity that does not found and even showed a loving kindness for people that have arisen triumphant over his human frailties. Like the proverbial mountain of refuge, he willingly offered his enamored curtain of cloud as shield over his clan of friends and acquaintances. His judgments, which were firmly rooted in law and wisdom, permitted even the most delicate arts like a soothing balm. He was a man with a very large heart that accommodated people from all walks of life and different shades of opinions and dispositions. He became a formidable refuge to a fast clan of followers who continually drew inspiration, succor, and strength to guide their journey through life. My Lord, the Honorable Justice Sissing Wesi was born on the 25th September 1958 in Obolo, Udenu local government area of the present day Enugu State. His Lordship attended St. John Cross Seminary in Suka from 72 to 77, emerging with a distinction in the West African School Certificate Examination. His Lordship gained admission into University of Nigeria, Enugu campus in 1979 where he studied and graduated with a degree in law in 1983. In the same year, his lordship represented the law faculty and indeed all Nigerian law faculties at the Philip Jessup International Law Moot Court Competition in Washington, D.C., United States. As the chief oracleist, his lordship did his NYC between 1984 and the of having a free, peaceful, and egalitarian society. His Lordship's intellectual accomplishments have, to a large extent, crystallized the legal profession by injecting confidence in the minds of both practitioners, law students, and the common man on the street. His astuteness and eloquence in the courtroom, coupled with the seamless application of legal wisdom to every matter, made him an enigma of some sort. My Lord, the Honorable Justice C.C. Mwesi was that great lion whose roar held in various courtrooms in Nigeria spellbound and stupefied at the same time. A quintessential role modeled to both the young and the old from all walks of life. He was literally a man of many parts. His industry, deep knowledge of law and dexterous execution of all assigned tasks stood him out as a man of honor and uncommon panache. It was these rare qualities that enhanced his meteoric accession to the Supreme Court bench just after spending six years at the Court of Appeal. A reliable acquaintance that I have been privileged to work closely with for several years at both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, his lordship was by all standards a rare gem, an unblemished specimen of trust and integrity. He had gallantly trodden many paths exclusively preserved for people of honor and nobility. For those who have been fortunate to encounter his lordship, he had willingly offered them his school in humility and industry. In everything his lordship did, 
He tried to leave an indelible mark that hosted the banner of honor and dignity. My Lord had traveled to different countries, presented several papers on the application of law to human and societal development, and had also had the opportunity of attending different conferences and workshops to whet his mental appetite. He was in attendance at the Silver Jubilee Fulbright Symposium, Golden Gate University, San Francisco, California in the United States of America in 2015. World Jurist Association in Warsaw, Poland in 2015. The Session of African Communion Commission on Human and People's Rights, Pretoria, South Africa. His Lordship was also a participant at the World Conference on Penal Reform, Burkina Faso in 2002. International Retreat on the Future of Nation States in Cligenta, Strasbourg, France in 99 and was the keynote speaker at the Golden Jubilee Annual Fulbright Symposium in Francisco in 2015, among others. His lordship had over 60 publications in books and journals that have attracted wide circulation and readership. It was in recognition of his sterling contributions to the development of the Nigerian judiciary and service to humanity that the federal government of Nigeria conferred the prestigious honor of commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, CFR, on his lordship. Even in death, the works of my lord remain as formidable, fountain to those in need of inspiration, succor, and even figure to calm the storm of life. His lordship's fatherly love, available disposition, and a learning humility had collectively conferred on him the status of a father figure while alive and even now. His exit from this world in his prime at this crucial time, when more was yet to be scooped from his past full of knowledge and wisdom, though very excruciating in our hearts, was however ordained by the Almighty God, the giver and the taker of life. He does not really call for mourning, but a celebration of an icon that had lived to the hilt and accomplished so much within the limited time permitted by his creator. It was Samuel Johnson that said, I quote, it matters not how a man died, but how he lived his life. My Lord, the Honorable Justice Nwezi engaged in various extrajudicial activities while alive. Among these, a member of the DFID Access to Justice Program in Enugu State, member of the National Working Group on the Reform of Criminal Justice Administration in 2004, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, ACJA 2015, is a brainchild of this group. Is a team member, Enugu State Sector Strategic Plan in 2004. The PATS DFID Honorary Consultant District Health System Law Regulations 2004. Member of OSI World C Expert Consultant Forum on Federal Budget Act and facilitator Enugu State Justice Sector Reform Team among others. His lordship was a distinguished scholarship awardee, Golden Gate University, San Francisco, California, in the United States, and Bad Justice of the Year Award in 97, Dignity of Man Award, University of Nigeria and Suka Alumni Association in 2001, Award of Excellence, Law Students Association, Namdi Azikwe University, Oka, Pan-African Distinguished Leadership Hall of Fame, Certificate of the African Student Union Parliament in 2016. Fellow, Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, Nigeria in 2015, among others. His Lordship was happily married to his Arthrop, the Honorable Justice Ugone Jacinta Unweze, a judge of the Enugu State Judiciary, and they are blessed 
with five lovely children. His Lordship was a devout Christian, a great mentor, academic by excellence, and a quintessential jurist that are trodden the global judicial landscape with remarkable source and sagacity. He was roundly an admirable family man that devoted so much time to the home front by molding his children with the best of care. He ensured that the fear of God was deeply rooted in their consciousness and firmly embossed on the templates of their arts as emblem of piety to guide them through the foibles of life. Adil, man of impeccable character, legal icon, indomitable lion in the temple of justice, though a power has eclipsed your earthly sojourn, we are, however, consoled by the indelible footprints you engraved on the sands of time. Your death has once again made us realize that of all of them, that uh, out of the several people that ever lived, almost all of them are dead now. Indeed, in reality, we all are just dead people that haven't died yet. Nevertheless, we have always found solace in the belief that as a well-spent day brings happy sleep, so does a well-used life bring happy death. Rest well in the bosom of your Creator, our dear brother Justice Nwezi. I thank you all for honoring our invitation to give honor to our honorable colleague. May God guide you safely back. This sense of responsibility and shared loss that we have all gathered here today to formally honor and pay final tribute to late Honorable Justice Chima Sanchez Mweze, JSC CFR, who left us on the 29th of July, 2023, following a brief illness. I'd like to use the opportunity to commend the Honorable the Chief Justice of Nigeria and his brother justices for picking out this auspicious day to form formally honor the late Honorable Justice Mweze for his outstanding contributions to the development of our law and the nation at large. Late Justice Mweze was a quintessential jurist whose impressive career profile transverses through private legal practice, continuing legal education and development, as well as judicial activism. He was also an intellectual whose scholarly and judicial accomplishments will continue to illuminate and influence our legal landscape for very many years to come. Through consistent advocacy and legal scholarship, Honorable Justice Mweze devoted his life and times to the study, development, and just application of our laws. His life was shaped by his faith as he started life as a Christian Roman Catholic seminarian at St. John of the Cross Seminary in Sukkah, an institution which ideals and philosophy positively influenced his early life's choices and aspirations. However, his passion for knowledge and justice inspired him to study law at the University of Nigeria in Sukkah, and he was called to the Nigerian Bar in 1984. Late Justice Nweze was appointed a judge of the Enugu High Court, State High Court, where he served in different capacities and was areas of legal study, as well as countless articles published in national and international journals, which are today being used as reference points in legal education and practice. His versatility also extended to various extrajudicial and vocational activities within and outside Nigeria, where he offered his services and impacted positively on persons in need. For late Honorable Justice C.C. Mweze and his beloved family, life is all about service, education, law, and justice. 
It was therefore not surprising that his wife, Honorable Justice Ugone Jacinta Nweze of the Enugu State Judiciary, followed the path of her late beloved husband. The passage of Justice Nweze has touched and affected us all profoundly. As it happened suddenly, at a time the nation and indeed his brother justices needed him the most. We are all aware that the Supreme Court is currently overwhelmed with backlog of, backlog of pending cases and appears to be one of the most busy Supreme Courts in the world. This administration is quite mindful of the continuing sacrifices of our judges and justices and is prepared to take on measures necessary to improve the welfare and working conditions of our Lord Justices. This is particularly so against the background of the increasing workload of the court vis-a-vis -vis the severely depleted number of the justices of the court. The federal government will, in line with its renewed hope agenda, work closely with the legislative and judicial arm of government with a view to exploring lasting solutions to this seemingly intractable problem. I pray for the peaceful repose of the soul of late Honorable Justice Sentius Mweze. Members of his family should be consoled in the knowledge that he lived an impactful and very memorable life worthy of emulation. He was one of the most influential jurists of his generation. His life will continue to serve as an object of lesson for us all believing. He's a true Nigerian of our dreams and an embodiment of patriotic service to our great nation, Nigeria. Today, we mourn him, but with confidence that future generations will remember his contributions to the development of our law. May the Almighty God, in his infinite mercy, forgive his shortcomings, comfort his family, grant him eternal rest, and a beautiful place in paradise. Amen. And I would like to end by correcting my, the four parts I made in my, at the beginning of my presentation. I'd like to recognize the Honorable, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ari Wola, as a Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger. Please accept my apologies. Thank you very much. On behalf of the body of senior advocates of Nigeria and advocates of Nigeria, with expression of gratitude for the invitation extended to the Buddy, to make this farewell remarks. Today, we come together as a profession, indeed, as the legal community in Nigeria, under the auspices and on the invitation of the Supreme Court to pay our respect my Lord, late Honorable Justice C.C. Wese, who has fallen gallantly we come to pay our respect my Lord I'm most grateful I thank my Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria. We come to pay our respect to my Lord, late Honorable Justice C. Mweze, who has fallen gallantly in the line of duty. We pray, Almighty God, the Father of all mankind, to rest his soul in perfect peace. The first question. Did my Lord distinguish himself from the bench? No doubt he did. But the quality of his judgments in the High Court and the Court of Appeal 
and most indisputably in this apex court. Indeed, his lordship will continue to live in our law reports through the judgments he rendered, the books he uttered, and the articles he published. The second question, did my lord have a relationship with the body of senior advocates? His lordship had a warm and mutually respectful relationship with individual members of the body and with the body of senior advocates as a whole. He was so at ease with senior advocates that he could visit and also made himself available at all times. Members of the body were always invited to his events. The most recent being the wedding of his daughter in Enugu, at which he received the massive support of his brother justices, who attended in numbers, as well as very many senior advocates. His Lordship indeed treated Bosan with respect. The third question, was his Lordship patient with members of the bar in court? His Lordship always tried to proceed at supersonic speed whenever he presided. And in the process, was at times impatient with members of the bar. He, however, made up for this apparent impatience by the quality of the judgment that was rendered at the end of the day in the matter. The final question. Was late Justice Cissing Wazy close to his God or tried to be close to his God? My Lord, who has fallen in the line of duty was a devout Catholic who will attend Mass as often as he could and most imperatively every Sunday. He was spotted on many occasions and particularly on Sundays at the Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Maitama, which was his local parish in Abuja. May Almighty God take all of this into account as late Honorable Justice C. Simweze now stands alone before the judgment throne of God. At this point, my Lord, permit me to express and convey to members of the immediate family our sincere condolences on his sudden passing. From this earthly experience of joy, <coughs> sorrow, happiness, laughter, grief, celebration, mourning, tragedy, and triumph. The impact of this transition was very devastating to the family and we can only offer prayers and words of consolation at a time like this and remember what was said by Escalis and I quote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until against our depth despair comes wisdom through the grace of God." Unquote. As we kickstart the rites of passage by this valedictory session, it is apt and appropriate to recall His Lordship's immense contribution to our jurisprudence, 
But more importantly, we should individually and collectively commend him in supplication to the mercy of Almighty God. That his failings, inadequacies, and other frailties may be condoned by the most merciful God, who is the master of the day of creation and master of the day of judgment. The late Justice C. Weze, who exercised the power of life and death in judgment over other mortals, now stands alone before the ultimate judge. And we can only pray for mercy, for mercy, and for mercy. Let me come to a close with this quote from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 55. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? I thank your lordships and all for listening and pray that the soul of Honorable Justice C. Singwese and the souls of all the justices. My lord, the Honorable, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Olukayode Ariwala, GCON. And my Lord, the Justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, it is with a heavy heart that I rise today in this special court session to pay tribute to one of the very outstanding personalities that ever graced our halls of justice, the Honorable Justice Chima Santos Mweze, PhD, JSC, CFR. Valedictory court sessions, irrespective of the circumstance, are sober and solemn moments. They both speak to the transience of the positions we, positions we are privileged to hold in life and the fleetness of life itself. When it is about death, it comes with it an additional feeling of sadness for an irreparable loss. The Honorable Justice Umweze, CC as he was fondly called by friends and colleagues, was a very distinguished judge who was not only devoted to duty, but also carried out the same conscientiously and with an unflinching dedication to the cause of justice. With his undeniable intellectual prowess, his lordship made very significant contributions to the growth of our jurisprudence and helped extend the frontiers of our legal landscape. Thank you, my lord. His Lordship will always be remembered for his erudition and the painstaking manner in which he waded through volumes of legal arguments to present the position of the law with clarity. His Lordship's decisions were legally sound, with strong logical foundations, a testament to the amount of hard work that went into every one of them. His Lordship was also a master of words, with practiced dexterity, he weaved English, English words and phrases, sometimes laced with Latin, to lucidly drive home points in every interesting, in very interesting and memorable ways. Honorable Justice Umweze of blessed memory was one of the justices, the thought of whom drove counsel to go the extra mile in preparing for a case. When pressing any position before his lordship, 
against which there is an existing conflicting authority, Council can be sure that his Lordship will raise the existence of such authority and will always expect, nay require, Council to distinguish between his case and the case which the conflicting authority was decided. His Lordship was painstaking in conducting every individual case and did not suffer unprepared counsel lightly. His Lordship's life was marked by diligence, hard work, and dedication to the cause of justice and the advancement of the legal profession. This is seen not just from his work on the bench, but from other contributions to the society. For many years, his Lordship For many years, his lordship was a law teacher at the Enugu State University of Science and Technology. I am told by a former student of his lordship that my lord was so consistent and devoted to his students, even though the service was rendered gratis, pro bono publico. Brilliant, amiable, humane, Godly, ethical, are just a few of the many wonderful attributes that have been ascribed to the Honorable Justice Unwesi. An astute scholar, a law teacher by excellence, a quintessential jurist with a healthy dose of humor, in and out of the courtroom, his lordship maintained decorum His Lordship maintained decorum and was always courteous to colleagues on the bench and to members of the bar. All through his sterling career spanning nearly three decades on the bench, His Lordship conducted himself in the finest traditions of the legal profession. His Lordship's passing is a great loss to the profession. Here was Justice Unwes. When comes such another? My lords, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, everything that has a beginning must have an end. Today we commemorate the end of a stellar judicial career which began in 1995 when his lordship was appointed as a judge of the High Court of Enugu State. We all hope, we all hoped that his lordship lived to be 70 and retired from the bench of this court after a fulfilling career. But it pleased God to let it happen this way. Even in death, we celebrate his lordship and his excellent service to the nation. To his lordship's wife, my lord, Honorable Justice Eugene Mweze, the children and grandchildren, I know that all these years of supporting your husband and father and sharing him with the rest of the country, you must have looked forward to the day he will retire and to have his twilight years when you would finally have him to yourself. It did not turn out this way, but still we have every reason to be grateful to God. We must also use this opportunity of my Lord's passing to contemplate our mortality, our sincerity, and our eternity. We should reflect on our lives, our fading moments, and the coming day of reckoning. Let us see to it that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, making the most use of time because the days are evil. We must remain conscious of the transcendent nature of life and daily rely on God to teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. On behalf of the Nigerian Bar Association,